perhaps, sir, you could give us your um, gloss on uh, on what the trends show to to date. Uh, yeah, look, I'll try and do this and try and keep it. Let's try and keep it nice and clear. So, in you've got two distinct, different testing strategies that were going on in August. You had the the the, the government one, which is the detected cases, and they were running at about a thousand through August. The ONS data at the same time was suggesting actually there's about four times as many people in the background. That's the random sampling. So one of the key issues is that whatever you detect is a function of who come forward. What we saw was in the detectable cases on the 2nd of September was a, an increase in that number. If you go back to the 30th of August, you had about 1,000 detected cases, and that then went up to about 2,600. It's interesting to note that was right around the bank holiday and the Monday when we had Rishi's eat to out on the Monday. And that was a huge success. But that actually led to potentially some sense of increase because it's not just that. It's also the delay over the bank holiday. Now we've seen cases about three and a half thousand over that two week period. In fact, it is early enough to start to see rises in deaths because the lag is about 14 days and you're right it's about three and a half thousand to four thousand. I also want to explain to you, though, what happens in September. We've seen on the RCGP surveillance data a 50% increase in consultations for acute respiratory infection. When you go back to school, when you open up businesses, when we come back off our holiday, there is a highly predictable increase in acute respiratory pathogens. That leads to a near threefold increase admissions for children in emergency admissions in September alone. So it's important to say you're acting against the backdrop of what happens in September for all acute respiratory pathogens. Out of the 200,000 people who are coming forward, it looks like about 25% of them are asymptomatic when they come forward, and about 150,000 who come forward are, have some discernible symptoms. Of them, 97% have some other acute respiratory pathogen on board, and about three to 4,000 have COVID. So it's get the context in place. It's also important to see what's been happening in places like Oldham. Oldham, for instance, over the seven weeks has been pretty stable throughout. It sort of moved up and down, but it stayed in the top 10. Irrespective of what we've done, actually what's happened in Oldham is the cases have ma maintained quite a, a level between about 60, 70 to 100 per 100,000. But it's interesting. Oldham and Rochdale are in the top two uh, are in the top 10 of cases right now. But if you go into the Pennine Acute Trust, what you see is there are 22 patients in them trusts. So although we've seen rising cases, what we're not seeing is its impact in hospitals and deaths. We are seeing a slight increase, but nothing like what we saw in March and April. Do you have an explanation for that, Professor Hannigan? Yeah, well, I think, look, there are two things. I think it's right to say at the moment is this is a point in time where we have to consider what's the strategy around our, our program from the government. Are we accepting that the virus is endemic? And when you understand endemic viruses that are seasonal, they circulate weekly through summer amongst the young people. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. We also have an issue with understanding what's called the cycle threshold to understand what viral load of people are accruing. And that's an important aspect which we can talk about later. And then there's the other aspect. When you think about seasonal pathogens, one of the things you've got to be mindful of is you don't push the disease by having delay tactics into the winter when we fare much worse in February, March, and there are a number of reasons for that, circulating co-pathogens, people have immunity issues. We have issues around our uh, vitamin D that we're re researching. But, but remember, between now and Christmas, we will see a fourfold increase in consultations in general practice in a good year. We will see an eightfold increase in an epidemic year. We will see a 50% increase in deaths between now and January. And the reason I'm giving this information is to provide context. Thank you. We're grateful for that. Uh, and we'll we'll drill that down into some of the, the local... Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. outbreaks with some of my colleagues uh, who represent some of those regions. But just to pick up finally before I turn to them uh, on uh, some of the implications perhaps of what you said. So if people, especially young people and children, are uh, going to the doctors because they've got symptoms that are associated with 
September that they don't have in, uh, in June, July and August. Uh, are you suggesting that some of the, the increased positive tests comes from the fact that more people are presenting themselves with symptoms for testing than did uh, in July uh, and August, but they might have the same level uh, of infectivity with regard to COVID? I'm saying for acute respiratory pathogens, now there are more people with other infections on board than COVID. But one of the keys about the detection is when you see rising cases, what you're picking up is what's in the background. That's what the ONS survey data tells us. And it's told us all along in the background, it's three or four times higher than what we were think we were picking up in August. And it was circulating weekly amongst the population. Wherever you go in and test more, you'll start to pick up what's there. And that's what we've seen with the strategy. And so when you focus and go into certain areas, there's been a, a strategy that said, oh my gosh, it's going up. But actually what you're picking up is what's there. And there's been an overinterpretation with language like exponential rise is, is an incorrect way of looking at the disease. Most of the increase is in line with a seasonal pathogen that's having a linear increase at this time of year, consistent with the other pathogens that are out there. Um, thank you very much. Let me go uh, quickly.